Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. I thought we'd go over a few issues raised by various comments I've received. Today, what's the real definition of atheism and why? This is a topic I've dealt with a few times in the past to varying degrees, but I've already heard most of the arguments related to it, so I think this may be the last time I'll be focusing on it. There's nothing that obstructs communication quite so much as when two or more people don't even speak the same language except one thing, when one or more of those people refuse to speak the same language. For this reason, most of the really big lies in existence are defended on the level of language. A word will be redefined, or its actual definition will be challenged, not to prove any kind of point, but only to cause equivocation and confusion and lead people into error, and I really feel that's happened in the case of atheism. Throughout the vast majority of human history, atheism was seen, rightly, as a radical, unjustifiable position that almost nobody held. Even as recently as 150 years ago, major atheist proponents and philosophers accepted the title only grudgingly, recognizing the tragic consequences of their decision and the things it obligated them to claim and believe in. A worldview with tragic consequences that are as clear and devastating as the ones associated with atheism can't really become popular, though. So sooner or later, someone wanted to convince a bunch of people to join their atheist club, and in order to fill up seats, they decided to just redefine the term. Like so. Atheism is lacking belief in the existence of a god or gods. What's wrong with this is that this is not the correct definition of atheism. It's false. The real definitions of atheism are Noun 1. The doctrine or belief that there is no god. 2. Disbelief in the existence of a supreme being or beings. Now, what makes these definitions different from the one just proposed is that in the first case, the atheist must actually believe something in order to be an atheist. Namely, he or she must believe that no god exists. This is much different from just lacking belief. At first blush, you might think that the second definition bears much in common with the one proposed by popular-level atheists, but in reality, the two are really very different. First of all, Disbelief doesn't just mean that you lack belief. Disbelief is a standpoint that people take of believing that a certain statement is untrue. For example, I lack belief that there are any people in Alpha Centauri. However, I don't disbelieve it because there's no reason to deny that there could be people in Alpha Centauri. I just don't have enough evidence to make that determination one way or the other. Therefore, while atheists of definition 2 may not hold atheism as a doctrine, nevertheless, their decision to disbelieve in God slash gods implies that their belief that gods do not exist is the same regardless. I saw someone online not too long ago claiming that we can't trust this definition because dictionaries just describe how words are commonly used, not what they actually mean. This is certainly true, so let's do what this person suggested and look at the definition presented by an encyclopedia. Atheism is typically defined in terms of theism. Theism, in turn, is best understood as a proposition, something that is either true or false. It is often defined as the belief that God exists, but here, belief means something believed. It refers to the propositional content of belief, not to the attitude or psychological state of believing. This is why it makes sense to say that theism is true or false, and to argue for or against theism. If, however, atheism is defined in terms of theism, and theism is the proposition that God exists, and not the psychological condition of believing that there is a God, then it follows that atheism is not the absence of the psychological condition of believing that God exists. More on this below. The A in atheism must be understood as negation instead of absence, as not instead of without. Therefore, in philosophy at least, atheism should be construed as the proposition that God does not exist, or, more broadly, the proposition that there are no gods. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. The point of confusion here is that many atheists assume that theism is not propositional, that it's just a matter of blind faith, which it's ridiculous to argue in defense of. 
This, however, is only an unsupported bias on the part of the atheist, who is making a judgment on someone else's worldview based only on their own unwillingness to take it seriously, or perhaps at best is a reflection of their own bad experiences with more faith-based theists. Now, this gives us a good understanding of what atheism is and why. However, there have, of course, been objections to this from alleged atheists, and I'll be addressing those now. Number one, every atheist uses this definition. Even if this could be proven, it still wouldn't matter. Suppose that every atheist thought the sky was red. Suppose they all thought that sulfur was blue, or that sound travels as fast as light. No matter how many of them agreed with these points, they would still be wrong. Furthermore, if they get the very definition of atheist wrong, then how can we be sure how many of them are actual atheists, and how many are just agnostics trying to sound cool? Number two. Definitions are not regular claims. The meaning of a definition changes depending on who speaks it and in what context. That's false. A definition retains the same truth value no matter what context it's used in. Now, in English, a word may have multiple different definitions, and determining which definition applies may require looking at the context. But this is not the case with the word atheist, in which history, etymology, and the philosophy of language all agree that its meaning refers to a belief that God does not exist. It's only popular level misunderstandings of the word that claims otherwise. Number three, definitions in themselves hold no truth value. In fact, this is all that definitions do, determine the truths that a word or phrase is meant to convey. What about the definition of the word definition? Does that hold no truth value? And if not, what did this objection just say? It might have said that an elephant holds no truth value, or a pear, or a scientific theory. Of course definitions have truth value, or communication is a wasted effort. You see, a truth value refers to whether a statement, word, or phrase is able to contain any truthful information. For example, things like beauty would probably not be able to do this because aesthetics are arguably not objective in nature. Most philosophers agree that words themselves, which are collections of letters or sounds, are not objectively bound to certain truth content, since words may be used to mean one thing in one language and another thing in another. For example, in English, the word shine means to send forth rays of light, or to come forth as rays of light. In Japanese, however, the same word, spelled the same way, shine, means die. Therefore, neither of these definitions is bound to the word necessarily. However, a definition is a meaning given to words. It's abstract, but it's also real and objective, like the number seven, and therefore it exists. In order for words to have value in communication, they need at least one definition of that type, like the word magnet. By contrast, the word Gesornenplatz means nothing, since it has no definitions and is therefore useless for communicating. However, if a definition carried no truthful information, it would also be unable to convey any meaning to those who heard it. The word elephant would be no more useful than the word Fazling, and communication would break down. In fact, any evidence which could be presented for the position that definitions don't have truth value would actually be evidence against that. This is because as long as I can understand the words that you use, that proves that the definitions of those words contain truth value. The whole notion of definitions not containing truth would, if taken to its logical conclusion, make language arts and foreign language classes an exercise in futility, even as far down the age range as kindergarten, and would reduce all human communications to a whole planet full of self-contained, illiterate, isolated individuals babbling words that only they can understand. This is simply not the way things are. Number four. If you want the meaning of a label, ask a person who actually adopts that label. It's just absurd to suppose that we can come to a better understanding of truth by only allowing each noun in our language to be defined for us by the beings that it applies to. For example, are we going to allow bankers to define for us what a banker is? Will we allow carpenters to define what a carpenter is? What about serial killers? Do serial killers get to define serial killing and thereby avoid paying the penalty for their crimes? What about situations where the noun doesn't apply to a person? If we want to know what a deer is, do we need to wait until a deer speaks up? It'll be a long wait. 
Clearly, we don't need the permission of a group of people in order to define that group. Definitions are about comprehension, not acceptance. To suggest otherwise is to invite chaos. Number five. There are those who are weak atheists and those who are strong atheists. As we saw a few minutes ago, there are a couple of different definitions of atheism, but they're both equivalent to each other in terms of what atheists have to believe in order to be atheists. The only difference is in whether they treat it as a dogma or just as a position that they hold. Number six. Using atheism to refer only to people who believe that God doesn't exist is too restrictive to be useful. The entire point of a definition is to establish finite limits for a word, to denote finite limits, to define, and atheism is a word that clearly outlines why this process exists at all. As an example, let's suppose that I were to take at face value the claim that atheism is about lacking belief in God or gods. Well then, it's an extremely impractical word to ever use, and it means basically nothing, because you can apply it to almost anything. Such a word would encompass any person on earth whose belief is not always perfect over the course of their lives, such as honest Christians who only lack belief to a small degree. It would describe sleeping people, people in comas, people with amnesia, people who are too old or too young to think in those terms, and people who've had a severe enough stroke. Beyond that, it would also describe cats, dogs, horses, trees, flowers, mushrooms, bacteria, planets, stars, dust, television sets, computers, lamps, chairs, tables, avalanches, snow, sunlight, and even empty space. Since none of those things have belief, all of them would be atheists. Indeed, imaginary entities such as unicorns and leprechauns would also be atheists because they also lack belief due to not existing. Such a word, in fact, could be used as an umbrella term for nearly everything in all of existence or non-existence, real or imaginary, and that is no kind of word to use. Even the word unbeliever, a much broader term than atheist, is a better word to use than that, since it at least implies a property of unbelief, which only thinking creatures can have. But lack of belief? That's not a definition at all, because it doesn't denote finite limits of anything. Number seven. A is the prefix put in front of the word to mean not, like amoral means not moral. Therefore, atheism is just anything that is not theism. That's not correct. The word atheist is not a compound English word at all. It descends to us from the Greek atheos, and atheos referred to those who believe that gods did not exist. So the reasoning presented in the Encyclopedia of Philosophy a few minutes ago is not challenged by studying the etymology of this word. Because atheism is a belief, arguments for atheism are possible. They wouldn't be possible otherwise, which would make atheism indefensible. So to sum up, the real definition of atheism involves claiming and or believing that God does not exist. And there are very good reasons why that is. Next, what makes a moral action moral? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.